Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom presentation apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from TechEdge and today I'm talking about some basic presentation apps and this is a good time of the year to talk about it towards the end of the year. Students finish projects, they document them and one of the best ways to document projects is using presentation apps and uh, Presentation apps have been with us for a long time, but there is a new generation of presentation apps. They're mostly cloud-based. All the three ones that I will show are cloud-based, so you don't have to store them on a specific computer or a device, and that means you have access to them everywhere. They're also in some ways simpler than they ever were. There are less options than, let's say, a full PowerPoint presentation, but that I think is more powerful because it forces students and, and anybody using them really to focus on what's really important, what do they want to show and how do they want to show it. The first one I want to talk about is Slides. This is from Google and it's part of the Google uh, app suite. If you're using Google Apps for Education, you have access to slides and one of the things that slides has done well over the time is the importing of things from PowerPoint so you can easily take PowerPoints that you've used and import them. So for, as teachers, if we've created a lot of content, this is great, but really what we want to make sure is that our students are able to work in slides. One of the advantages of working in slides, like anywhere else in Google, is that students or adults can collaborate on making the presentation so each can work on their own page they can edit each other pages there's that whole notion that uh, Google saves previous versions so even if they make a mistake or erase something it is recoverable even between sessions uh, and so that's a, a great piece and I'll give you some examples of things that uh, I've used in that this is for example a short welcome to a tech edge and you can see that there are, there, and whenever they make changes, you can see the differences very much like a PowerPoint. You can see the slides on the left and you can see it on the right and just pressing on the go button will go into presentation mode. And then uh, as it loads, uh, you can see it go full screen. So this is how you manage it. Uh, to add a new slide, you just press the uh, plus and you can see that you can uh, add uh, many different features, so there are lots of features including line shapes, uh, tables, uh, links are very very important so you can link to outside materials on the web. You do have to remember and students have to remember as well that if you are including links you have to be connected at that moment to include that feature. Uh, you can see that there are different setups so you can use lots of pictures whether they're full screen or part screen very much like a presentation uh, software of any kind. Uh, to add people to share, you just press the person with a plus next to it and you include the people based on the uh, email they use in Google. And if you're a Google for Education school, that should be very easy to do. Uh, you can also add other people depending on how your system is uh, built and you can see that you can build even presenter notes and other things so you can do lots of work. It's got enough to create really nice presentation without uh, doing too much um, and just the button to add uh, slides is at the bottom of the slide selector so you just do a plus, you select the format you want and then you go ahead. So this is slides from Google, really user friendly. I've seen kindergartners and up use it very effectively. And again, lots of choices inside, but really simple enough that anybody can use. And the thing I love about it is the collaboration. The second one is an even simpler presentation that is really based on more on the visual. And this is Haiku Deck. I've talked about Haiku Deck in the past, but it's worthwhile uh, remembering that uh, it's there. And I'm showing these things right now on the iPad. They look a little bit differently on, the, um, on my laptop or a Chromebook, but they are available that way too. So you can use it with any device you have, which is again, a great benefit. And I keep talking about this uh, throughout our shows, but I love these apps that you, uh, and uh, those web-based services that you can use on any device you have that frees students from, being, uh, from having to find the same device. It also frees them to share 
and uh, to use a variety of devices, whatever's available, even phones work with most of these, including a Haiku Deck. And a Haiku Deck is great because it is primarily a visual form. So yes, you can include words and I do in this easy presentation that I created. Uh, you navigate just by swiping or by clicking if you're on the uh, computer. Uh, it's built for these big impact photos. And these are just a few that I put together uh, just to demonstrate what we're doing right now. But creating an extra uh, slide is very simple. You press the plus on the bottom and here it is. And you've got different formats that you can use. And you can also do an image search, which is fantastic. Uh, the image search, uh, let's just do this because I'm doing this about China. You can do a search and it'll bring up different places. Um, I'll choose something quickly. And now I have a background for my text. Again, the emphasis here is on the visual, less on the text. But you can include different things, including um, different uh, graphs and figures to add to what's going on. So Haiku Deck is great because it's simple. It's great because it focuses on the visual and therefore it forces a very careful choice, I would argue, of the visuals. And you can, of course, choose the visuals you yourself have. You can change themes and change fonts. But again, simple selections, which in my mind and in my experience watching a lot of classrooms, help speed up the creation process because you don't have that many options. And so you're not meandering just spending a lot of time on a font or choosing uh, or writing a lot of text even, really, what is the most important? What visual helps you make that point? And that's Haiku Deck. The last one I want to talk about is considerably more uh, sophisticated and has been with us for quite a while, and that is Prezi. And what I love about Prezi, which is very different than the other two, is Prezi has a different level of sophistication because you can arrange things in a, what is essentially a 3D space because you can zoom in and out and go sideways. It's a way to organize the things that you're, uh, you're thinking about. So let me give you an example um, of a presentation that I did create. Now, Prezi is more easily maneuvered on the, on the laptop if you go to the app uh, or to Prezi.com and you use it that way. But you can use it on the iPad to show it and you can do some basic editing. It's not as easy and you, can, you don't have all the features, but I've worked with it rather extensively on the iPad and I, I like it. I definitely like the fact that you can move it around and uh, you don't have to be then tethered to a computer while you're presenting. You can actually walk around the room, walk around anywhere. Uh, you can do this actually from your phone. So there's the visual representation, the, the spatial organization, and that ability to zoom in or and out to include different media. So we have a, a video right here at the bottom and we can keep navigating it even beyond the pre-programmed steps to make sure that we're getting to all the places we want. So this is Prezi. Again, what's great about it is the movement, although some people, if there's excessive movement, seem to be a little bit queasy. So you have to make sure that everybody's ready for it. And students know not to just have things zoom in and out all the time and move in, in weird shapes uh, in ways that is not productive from the presentation perspective. What it does add uh, and Prezi has always been great about this, is a three-dimensional thinking about the content you want to deliver. So it's not just about making cool transitions, but it's actually about contributing to the content through that movement and that ability to zoom in and out. So today we talked about three presentation apps that you can use on multiple devices, and I'll see you next time on Mobile Learning in the Classroom.